Mike Picelli here. Thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of All I've Got to Do that they did on September 11th, 1963. It's probably one of the most forgotten of all Beatles songs, and there's not a lot known about it. Apparently, it was written 100% by John Lennon in 1961, and then he tweaked it a little bit in 63 by adding all those yeahs. Um, one thing for sure is they never played the song live at any of their early gigs. And Paul, George, and Ringo uh, heard it for the first time in the studio when they were working on their, uh, their second album uh, with the Beatles. John said it was just him trying to do Smokey Robinson again. And it was similar to the Miracles 1959 uh, hit, You Can Depend On Me. But to me, they sound nothing alike, other than perhaps there's a suspended chord at the beginning of the Miracle song. So they're in EMI, September 11, they do 14 takes live to tape, and they get the song exactly how they wanted it. And there's only one overdub, which is the first chord that uh, George plays on the intro. Uh, it is reminiscent of John Lennon writing in that uh, the verses are 11 bars, and the refrain is nine bars long. Uh, they mix it on October 29th. Uh, it was released in Britain on the album with the Beatles on November 22nd, 1963, and then in the U.S. on January 20th, 1964, on an album called Meet the Beatles. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his J160E on All I've Got to Do. And um, he doesn't start playing until measure seven of the first verse. Now, in order to play verses, you'll need these chords. You'll need a C sharp minor. You'll need an E. An F sharp minor. And an A minor. So he comes in on uh, measure seven, and it's there's a little anticipation in some of the strumming. It's like uh, like he, he'll play. Um, so it's like one and two and and four and and then a lot of straight eighth notes. But the anticipation usually comes in on the end of two. So when he first comes in, it's like this. It's um. Then you're to verse two, actually, and in verse two he plays the entire verse. So he starts on C sharp minor, and I'll just play it for you. Charts and tabs will be available at MikePicelli.com. I appreciate your consideration on downloading those because that helps uh, support my work. Now, when we get to the first refrain, it's, it's uh, of note is that he's playing straight eighth notes on, on a few new chords. You'll need this A chord. You'll also need an E sixth for the refrain. Uh, but when he first comes in, you can tell that he, he's noticeably playing his eighth notes on all downstrokes. So on the refrain, he plays... Um, then when he gets to C-sharp minor, it's down and up again. Now on this measure, it's very interesting. He kind of strums through an E chord and strums through a C-sharp minor chord. Back to A, and he injects that E6. So a refrain with Ringo would be one, two, three, four. Thank you, buddy. Just like that. Verse three, um, no new chords. I'll just play it for you. Verse three is like this. He 
always kind of digs in a little harder on that last E chord going into the second refrain. Now it's very evident on the second refrain that he, once again he's just pounding all downstrokes on his eighth notes of the A chord. And is there any new chords? Uh, no, I don't believe so. So on uh, the second refrain is. Um, Interesting how he kind of anticipates that C sharp minor right there. Continuing. The time he sticks the E6 in there, back to A. All right? And then just fades out between uh, C sharp minor and E. Again, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com, which will make it even more clear. George Harrison is playing his Gretsch Country Gentleman on All I've Got to Do. Sounds to me like he's playing through an AC-15, so I'm going through my Vox Berkeley Super Reverb. Um, there's an overdub where George plays a chord at the beginning, and it's a variation of a augmented chord that the Beatles used a lot. Uh, I guess we'll call it an E augmented 9 at 11, and it looks like this. Great sounding chord. Just kind of pick the E first, then go down. And for a verse, you'll need these chords. For the most part, uh, it sounds like George is playing just top four strings. So on your C-sharp minor, like this. Then your Beatle E chord. An F-sharp minor. And an A minor. And that'll get you through a verse. Um, George is doing like a syncopated part. And he plays on beat two, and on the end of three, and on the end of four. For the most part, he does that continually. He makes a few mistakes. Uh, again, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if you want to see exactly what he played. I notated it perfectly. Um, so when the verse starts, he plays like this. One. clever little part, right? Second verse, very similar, except maybe a little kind of screw up in the last uh, verse, the last measure, I should say. So uh, help me, Ringo. So here's this verse two, two, three, four. Into the refrain, he plays eighth notes again, but like for the most part on uh, two and and four and. So you'll need an A. He plays the same basic uh, first position A that John does down here. And again, he's going to use an E sixth. And he plays it closer to what John was doing uh, in parts. So he plays on the refrain. It's like one. that same strum on the E to the C sharp minor. And, um, all right, really nice. Verse three, again, I'll just play it for you. One, let's see, let's do Ringo, help me out Ringo. Easier with the beat. One, two, three, four. Mm.
Second refrain, again, he's gonna think about eighth notes on beats two and four. He misses some of them. Uh, like on the first measure, he plays one, three, four, and, and he catches it up. C sharp minor. And then on the little longer ending, on this, just quarter note strums. To the A, I'm sorry. And on the fade out, on the very first one, for some reason, he plays on two and. He goes one. I didn't do that right. One. Again, charts and tabs at MikePicelli.com. You could see it perfectly. Uh, I wrote out every measure of what George played, and I, I appreciate your consideration on downloading those because it helps uh, with the work. Okay, I put it all together in a sound alike so you can see how the parts uh, fit together. So have a look at this. Whenever I Now you see how all the parts fit together and once again it's ingenious guitar playing by uh, John and George and Paul did a nice job uh, playing perfect fifths there on the C sharp minor and on the E during the verse. Well, I suggest you learn John and George's part, play along with my sound like you'll get it just like the Beatles. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where all the charts and tabs are available for every one of my uh, video lessons and I appreciate your consideration on downloading those because it helps, uh, you know, the cause. So until next time, have fun playing this great old song. And I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. Mm -hmm.